Hello, my peeps. This is Tracy Stewart, independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Socially known as the paper pusher. Oh, and incredibly frustrated with technology. Hope you're having a lovely Wednesday. <laughs> um, I did have a fun Wednesday. Uh, today was our midweek escape. Uh, which I'm doing once a month on the second two or second Wednesday. I want to do it on Tuesdays. So i got to find a space that I can use Tuesdays. Um, it is hot out and I had to load and unload and so I was a little like, Ugh. so when I came home and then I had to fight with technology, I was not impressed. And seriously, I, I think I have it fixed until I go live and then it doesn't work. And it's just frustrating as all get up. But we're moving on. I have lots of fun things to show you. And I was going to make a card, like make one of the cards to show you, but I think when I show you the cards and the pieces that went into it, I'm pretty sure you, it's, it's easy enough to figure out. Um, it's more just, I think sometimes you just need to see the idea. And and again, I'm, I'm going through this phase. <laughs> it's just a phase right now where I'll make a card and I'll be like, oh my God, I love it. I wonder what it would look like in this color. I wonder if I flipped, I wonder. <laughs> so I don't seem to make a single card anymore. I make multiples of everything and trying every different thing. And what about, and what about... <laughs> So, yep, I got a stack of samples for you. But then we're going to make something fun to go with it. Right? And I'll show you that at the end. But first off, what is up on Wednesday? Well, it is the 12th of July. I should say that just in case somebody's watching this on repeat and wondering what I'm talking about. Because it no longer applies to anything. Um, oh, I'll get to it. Um, <laughs> sorry, I just stopped there for a minute to think. Am I doing this in the wrong order? So... First off, this is the wrong graphic because for whatever reason, I saved both of these in the same folder and oh my God, somebody is coming to the door. Um, I'm just going to ignore and see how this goes. Um, I saved the ready set earn, or one that said earn and then there's one that says redeem and <laughs> um, oh, and uh, I can't find the one that says earn, but here's what you need to know. From July 6th, which is already passed, so today, until the 31st of July, for every $60 you spend before shipping and tax, oh, God bless you, woman, you just turned around and went away when you saw I was busy. Thank you. Um, sorry, $60. <laughs> I'm not starting over. Here we go. Um, for every $60 you spend before shipping and tax, you earn a $6 coupon. The $6 coupons can be used between the 1st and 31st of August to take $6 off the cost of stuff. It doesn't take the cost off shipping and tax. Shipping and tax is just the facts of life. Let's say. Oops, sorry, I'm shaking the paper. So this is good, and you can earn as many coupons, and then you can redeem as many coupons as you earn, as you earn. Like so, you it's not one coupon per order or anything. If you, um, I think I have six of them now, <laughs> if from the online exclusive day. So if you, if you earn six coupons. That gives me $36 of product. I can go and order a $36 something, pay the shipping and tax, and it's mine. That's all I'm paying is shipping and tax, $36. Like, there's no limit. So, it's awesome. Um, anybody who did earn coupons, like, thank you all for your orders last week for the new online exclusives and the, the boat go and stuff. Um, I sent everybody their coupon. And on the 1st of August, I'm going to send you a, a message saying, hey, you remember those coupons? You can use them now. Don't forget. They expire at the end of the month. And then probably a day or two before the end of the month, I'm going to send another message saying, hey, did you use your coupon yet? Don't forget, it expires on, well, let's go with Friday. I don't know, whatever the last day of August is. So I will remind. I don't think it is actually a Friday because I'm pretty sure my son goes to school on the 30th. Is his first day of school on the 30th of August, which is a Monday, I think. So I'm going to guess that Tuesday would be the last day. Anywho, bonus day coupons. Good deal. Don't forget to redeem them online exclusives. What a fun event that was. <laughs> um, there's some frustration going on around these, but I, I think the online exclusives are working just like they're supposed to, but not all the customers and demonstrators um, maybe necessarily are getting the, are, we're, we're so used to something else that this is, this is new and different and we want it to be the same way as the something else, but it ain't. So um, yes, things went crazy. And Stampin' Up! did come on the other day and give us more information, which is why I know more about some of this stuff than I did would have known last week. But So I will, I will share what I can tell you. 
and not not because I'm holding stuff back, but there's I mean I only know so much. Um, so the idea behind online exclusives, three times a year, Stampin' Up puts out a catalog, right? There's the big annual catalog that comes out at the beginning of May. There is the um, Christmas catalog or holiday mini, which now which is they've changed all the dates. I'm just going to call them what I used to call them because I think that's what people are used to, anyways. The holiday mini, which will now come out on the beginning of September and run until the end of December. Um, so the coupons, you, or the coupons, sorry, the catalogs used to run six months at a time, the minis, and the annual would run for 12 months. But there was lots of overlap and it would get old and they were, and people wanted like more change and keeping things current and have a little bit more flexibility. This, this allows, and you'll know when I finish, um, uh, stamping up a, a lot more flexibility because they're, they're making some changes based on feedback. So, um, so yes, the coupon times are for the minis are shorter now. So September to December is the holiday mini and then it's i think it's january february march i think it's still just january to march <laughs> i have to double check that now um for the spring mini the which has you know the easter and spring and all the baby sets and all the cute valentines and stuff the the holiday mini is more fall thanksgiving halloween christmas and then the annual one that goes out so in between those those minis now they're going to do these online releases so March, June, November. They're going to, well, I guess that's not always in between, but um, so they're going to release some limited products and we don't know how many, we don't know for how long, we don't even know what they are ahead of time. We get something like this, it gives us a little sneak peek and that's it. But it was lots of fun because I, I was like, oh my God, little red truck. I didn't even care what the rest of it looked like. I mean, I could see one of the stamps right there, but but anyways, it was enough and it's good. It's coming. Hopefully it's here next week. It's already shipped. I'm quite happy to see that it shipped. Um, almost all of the orders I had to do them in in different ways for different things and I was ordering as I was getting to certain amounts because I wanted to make sure that I ordered while I could before anything went out so what we have since found out is that this stamp set actually sold out and it was they were not planning on restocking it but it sold way better than they thought it would and so they've now made the decision to restock it so it will come back and they make their own stamps in Utah a couple hours from the Stampin' Up! office they have a facility uh, the thing is, there's other things they're getting ready for, right? There's other releases. There's the Christmas release. There's whatever they're doing. So it doesn't mean that everything stopped and they're instantly doing this. But they've now put some priority on making more of these because it sold so well. Um, this stamp was the one that we could pre-order. So it was a little bit... You can only see part of it. I guess there's the other part. It's the sleigh and the horses. This one is still in stock. It was fine. Um, this one here, you can sort of see little bits and pieces of. It had flowers and it had dyes that went with them. Um, the stamp set sold out. They still have extra dies, so they're going to make more stamp sets to go with the dies. When the dies run out, maybe they'll restock. Maybe not. Um, the punches, the the there were some issues with the number on this one, I think, because it was going in stock, out of stock, in stock. They were selling out on the trucks. Um, this one is likely to be longer term. It's not just a Christmas set, even though I keep saying it's a little red truck. You can actually make this truck whatever color you want. So, and I I did post some some samples in the. The artisan that does it, Monica Tacoma, I think maybe. Uh, I'm pretty sure she's from, um, she's Dutch, I'm pretty sure. Um, oh my God, she's made some amazing samples and they're not all Christmas. So this one will likely stay longer. Now the staff set might sell out again. They still have punches. They might even restock the punch. But the deal with online exclusives is they're meant to be here. Look, this is new, get it now. It'll tide you over till the next catalog comes over. It's not meant to be in stock forever and in publications and in flyers and in things. So we have to get used to this. Um, it's just different. But there's there's stuff in there and there's uh, there's some cute ribbon. And hopefully I'll have it all by next Wednesday. And I can show you next Wednesday. But when I do get it, I will, I will unbox it for you and show you all the stuff. Because sometimes you just need to see it in person. And I did order this stamp set before it sold out. And I did order this. Um, I did not order the other two. But I have those two and then some paper and some ribbon and... Anyway, it'll be fun. Uh, speaking of selling out, <laughs> so the clearance rack, they updated on the same day, um, and it had a ton of stuff in it. And they, they I mean, we're talking some really good deals in there. Um, one lady had wanted some gold ribbon, and as I was ordering and putting, adding stuff to the cart, and I had ordered some ribbon for her, and I'm getting the last of the items, and in the middle of ordering, and this is at midnight. This is at like I don't know what's probably then. It was probably twelve thirty. 
Uh, a thing flashes up on my screen and says, uh, Gold Ribbon is now sold out. We're removing it from your cart. <laughs> so it, some stuff was going that fast. There is still a lot of stuff left and there's a lot of deals on stuff. Like it's marked up to 80% off. So, but this stuff is, this is like what's left from previous catalogs. When it's done, it's done. There is no more. Um, and it basically, it just kind of shows up. If it's there, they have it left. If you go back two days later and you don't see it, it's because it's sold out. It's either there or not. It's easy enough to figure. Um, you just, you just have no idea how much is left. <laughs> um, I ordered this. I'm actually pretty excited about this too. Sorry, I, I wasn't getting very good pictures because I was rushing, but um this is the newest kit release that came out so this was like the monthly kit that came not the paper pumpkin one this is the the, the kit collection um and it's blossom something kit sorry um and they're slimline cards so they're longer and thinner which these are great money cards um and there's no stamping this um this kit is 18 dollars plus shipping and tax um and so when i saw the price i was like oh no stamping because there's no stamp set or ink spot or block in it, which makes the kit cheaper. So what's in it, though, is these labels. So one says happy birthday, and this one says you matter. And they'll be in the four, I guess they call them the four Stampin' Up! languages, but um, they, not everything they sell is in these four languages, but whenever they can, they make things in four languages, English, French, German, and Dutch. So these labels will be in those four languages. Um, and the, I'm just looking forward to them. They're just like bright, beautiful cards. And I absolutely love this big happy birthday font. So um, as far as events go, um, I've got some stuff coming up in August. We're going to do our holiday head start at the end of August. I've got a pop-up at the end of August. And we'll be doing uh, another midweek escape um, if I can get... Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna ask for RSVPs this time because I prepped so much stuff. And now i got to do something with all that stuff that's prepped. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to require RSVPs the next time, but if I can get enough interest, cause summer, it's a little quiet in town in the summer and I'm not actually sure who's around. I'm hoping to do that. Here's the other big news though. And I grabbed the wrong graphic. I see. Um, cause I have a graphic that says 50% sold out. Yep. Registration's been open just over a week. Um, these things are so much fun and we get a lot of returnees. And this time there's even a, a prize for people who are coming for their third or fourth time. This is our fourth. Um, but yeah, this is already about 50% sold out. So if you are interested in coming to the Christmas extravaganza, you need to go to the link where I posted a link, but I can post it again, or, or there's links in my newsletter as well. Um, you have to go to the link and register, and then you have to send me the hundred dollars. And the, my email is in the registration. It says, you're not considered registered till you ETF me this much money. And it gives you my email. So you can just cut and paste it from there. Then I will send you a confirmation. If you only do one or the other, you don't get a confirmation until both parts happen. We get the mini catalog as demonstrators. We get to see it early at the end of this month. So on the 26th, we get it. So on the 28th, my partner in crime and I, Tamara, will have perused it, figured it out, made some plans, and we will let you know what projects go in it and what bundle option we're going to offer. And if there's a extra charge for the bundle, we'll tell you what that difference is. And so if the bundle is an extra $35, let's say, um, to get the st uh, dies that go with it, then you've already paid your hundred. Then you just pay 35. And that's, to, that's so that if we pick a, a stamp set that has a bundle or sorry, that has dies, that has the bundle option, I guess it could be a punch too. That's not, that's not to say it wouldn't be. Um, we want to still be able to offer it to you at the 10% bundle rate, which means we would, we would just pay the difference that you would pay if you bought it as a bundle. So 50% sold out. Shall I say that one more time? 50% sold out. Uh, there's also no late registrations this year. So if you've registered by the 30th of July, we're going to draw and one person's going to get either the punch or the dies or whatever goes with the bundle for free. And then on the 4th of September, done. No more registrations, no late, because the time it's going to take for us to order, get the stuff because shipping is fun again and prep the stuff for the middle of October. That's it. So this is a good time. You should come. <laughs> okay. That's what's up Wednesday in far, in, 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 uh, I was going to say in far away land, in paper land. Now, sorry, I am like slowly as I'm doing that, sliding off my chair. Now, this is what I've been working on <laughs> this week. Um, I told you I'm having a lot of what if moments. I'm also having a lot of let's go simple moments and I'm having so much fun. Seriously, just play in with stamps, inks, and paper. I love my die cuts and punches and the boxing folders and all those fun things. But 
when you challenge yourself not to use any of them. I did towards the end, but um, it's so much fun. So I was mostly using this color and contour set, uh, which is in the annual catalog. And I think it came out, a, I want to say a year ago. It could possibly be two years ago. Um, some of the things are still on blocks. But it's got, I just love this, that's upside down, in case you were wondering. I just love this line art that goes with it. And then it comes with this impressive set of dies. So I was mostly using that. I did add a few things, you'll see. Um, I'm gonna put that over there. And again, I started simple <laughs> and I made a collection. This card, which I do like, it is like just the simple, and honestly, if you if you took the time to make a card and send it to somebody and wish them a happy birthday and write nice things in it, I'm not even sure it matters what the outside looks like, but this is just, it's, okay, I'll see if I can do it so you can see. This is a piece of paper folded in half and stamped on. There's no layers, there's no die cuts, there's no embossing. And look how nice that is. It's like striking, I think. Anyways, I like it. Um, and this stamp set comes with this little separate stamp that has the bud on it. Oh, so cute. You wanna know what else is awesome about this stamp set? It is by design. It has this cool, I should have made one that was didn't I didn't put color in. Um, it is by design, meant to be this like really curly cue line drawing cool thing. And then there's a stamp that goes over top, said stamp. Um, and it's not meant to line up exactly, right? You just kind of get the bud at the top where the bud is and you kind of overlay it close to where the three are and you stamp. So there's no stress, there's no getting it right or like, oh, it's right or it's wrong. It just puts some color in the general area of the flowers. So super easy to stamp as well. Now, the first set that I made, um, I start. I just started with Moody Mauve, right? Moody Mauve? Moody Mauve. I'm trying to think now. Everybody, there's so much discussion about how to say it. I think I say Moody Mauve. I was trying to do it the other way, but I don't, that's not how I say it. Moody Mauve. Um, so the five in colors are earthy, lovely colors. And so I thought I'm just going to use those. I did pick a green. <laughs> this is a pretty peacock because I wanted a green stem, but you'll notice I made stems in other colors as well. So this is very simple, right? But then I decided, no, no, I can jazz it up a little bit. And still, other than the fact that I put some twine on it, this is still just stamp sink and paper. I made a layer, because I do like layers. Even if they're white on white, I do like layers. I made a little layer, stamped the same thing, put the um, put the twine on it, and then I made this out of Moody Moe as well, and just stamped on it. So this is stamped in the Pretty Peacock as well. Right? So I just added a layer. Yeah, I should do it this way underneath. We'll see how much we'll see how much stuff I can get in the camera before I'm completely inundated. Sorry, there's my arm again. Okay, so we got those two. But then, but wait, there's more. Sorry, I did that so excitedly the dog jumped up on me. Get down, rascal. Oh, there we go. Um, sorry, I, I have envelopes behind each one of them too, in case you're wondering. But then I made this card. Now this might be my fave. Um, I just like the way it looks. So all I did was I, I stamped, I started out by stamping this offset right underneath. Like there's just a, a, an outline layer. See, I do have some outlined. It, it's cool all on its own. So I was gonna offset it. And then I thought, eh. So then I just stamped on either side of it to fill it in. And it, it's kind of at an angle. I try not to do things straight because then when they're crooked, they won't look wrong. <laughs> See, that's how my brain works. If I intentionally do them so they look wonky, then nobody will expect that I was trying to do them straight because straight ain't happening. Um, even you ever watch me cut a, a slice of bread, a piece of cake, anything, I cannot cut straight for nothing. So I can't stamp straight either. So anyways, I just did this and then I, I just stamped the same thing. I kind of put my little die cut over it and just to make sure that I was getting it where I wanted. Um, I'm gonna, I made some other ones that were smaller. I decided afterwards this was too big. So I need to make these a little bit smaller, but, um, so I just put this up so I could make sure I knew where it was going to go. And I just stamped over top of it. And then all I ended up doing was lining up the, um, the stem. Now the newer ones, I decided I was going to make this much. So by doing it this way, I wanted to have a little bit of the top off or at least more of the leaves or something. So there was more outline going, but I love this card, this little strip of cardstock. This is, and this is all pre-cut, right? I didn't use the, other than this, I used a die, but this is all just recut. 
But then, oh my goodness, I love, love, love these embellishments. And I'm trying to do things with one hand. There's a gray one in there too. The the pebbled path, I, I'm, I'm loving the color pebbled path. And you think it's gray. No, it's this cool brownish gray silver pewter something. I love it. Anyways, these are awesome. And uh, so I started putting embellishments on things too. <laughs> and in this case, they were just tone on tone. But my lovely sister-in-law came to cards today and uh, she made a card out of this and people were just free willing it. I mean, that's that's how it works. I prep a whole bunch of stuff and then do what you want with it. Um, and so she made the next card we're doing, a version of that um, with pebbled path and the boho blue. So she had like both colors going for various things. Oh my God, it was like just a beautiful combination. Beautiful combination. So this was a card that I had prepped for today. <laughs> so, and I, oh, here, just gonna, there, I'm going to tease you with that and then I'm going to come back. I will show you that these are all basically just stamping, right? Um, I think it was, I think it was, I actually made this card, then this card, then this card. I made them in that order, actually. Um, I think it was after I did this one too, though, and I was like, oh, I wonder what other colors I should, like, what do these look like in all the other colors? <laughs> So then um, I started making things in other colors. So this is the same pretty peacock stem, but this is wild wheat, which has kind of a, it is like, it is the perfect color of wheat, but it's kind of goldy. And I think when you first stamp it, it stamps darker and it stamps kind of green. So give it a chance. Um, I also noticed, and I'll show you here shortly, um, that a lot of these colors, they're like deep colors. And um, a lot of them you don't want to stamp direct. Let me find my sample. Oh, here, I'll get to it eventually. Um, this one, I stamped the stem in Pebble Path and then did the Boho Blue. And then instead of, we have gray twine. We have a, you can buy a, a set of twine that has black, white, gray, and vanilla. Yes, there's four of them. Um, so I had some of the gray twine, so I just added that in. Same thing. I mean, I could have tried this with blue. I think I did try blue on a different one. Some of the darker color cardstock, it doesn't work. But on the lighter cardstock, you can certainly just do over top. But it was more just getting an idea for things. Um, this one would be Pretty Peacock with copper clay. And then instead of the bow, this one got dirty and fast today. Instead of the bow, I thought, oh, no, let's go back to the embellishments. <laughs> so threw a few embellishments on there. Um, and then, oh, yeah, see, I did try it with the... So here's the difference. And boho blue might be the only one where you can get away with it. But I noticed with the other ones, if you stand full strength it's very dark now the boho blue was way darker when it started but I, I let it dry the other ones I stamped on my my little map first and, and yeah some of them were very dark um, and then I just I just kept doing different things these ones these ones aren't even full cards these were just the fronts because after a while I was like I gotta prep for tomorrow <laughs> I gotta prep for the next day um, but yeah the same thing it stamps and that fancy this up a bit eh, maybe I could put some embellishments on it uh this one does have embellishments and oh i was gonna say it looks like it's got like a piece of dog hair or something stuck to it but it's the way the lights reflecting on the very shiny pebbled path so this is pebbled path um flowers because why not silver flowers um and the pretty peacock and then this i just use smoky slate which is a just a lighter gray instead of the pebbled path um you could use the darker colors you just have to heat a boss and I wasn't up for that the other day because my desk was so full, I didn't have room to heat a boss. Uh, this was one of my fall color thoughts. I'm like, what if I put a copper clay stem with wild wheat? <laughs> so I did that. So as you can see, there's no end to different combinations you can come with this thing. So here, let me get my, because I need them for afterwards. I need to have just my, my moves. So lots of them. Um, I don't actually think I've taken pictures yet, but I will. Okay, so back to this one. So now I, go, I started getting fancier, and I started introducing die cuts and designer series paper. And twine and embellishments. Okay, I do like <laughs> to put stuff on my cards. Uh, and this one, I also die cut out this. But I did have it, so, and I made a bunch of these for, for whoever was coming today. I'm going to back upside down. So I, I cut some out of each of the patterns. Um, and I think, I thought I had a die cut flower here, but <laughs> if I do, I, I buried it. Um, so I, I, I absolutely love this pattern. I have no idea why it speaks to me. I absolutely love this pattern in every color. So that's, that was the first one I used. 
Um, this one, every time I see it, I think of a leopard. And I just, mm, I don't know if I'll ever use that side of the paper. Maybe at Valentine's Day, I don't know. but And it doesn't matter what color it is. I see it and I think leopard. Um, I love the stripes. And these are slightly distressed, like not perfect stripes, which makes them even better. But I think you could definitely do that. Um, I love the dots. This is the pebbled path. The dog has decided to come and help me. Super helpful. Um, but I'm going to show you. And this is a quiz. So enter it in the comments afterwards. I Actually, you know what? Enter it in the comments afterwards. Because I will give a prize to whoever comments on this video. Actually, I'll draw it from all the people. Because I, I think more than one person is going to get this. Seriously, rascal. Get down. <laughs> He's, he keeps grabbing my one arm. I can only use one arm. There we go. Um, what movie does this pattern make you think of? It's Copper Clay. All right. I'm going to draw from everybody who answers that question. I got a prize. I don't know what the prize is yet, but I'll tell you when I post the question. Because uh, that was just impromptu. Anyways, I had a whole bunch of different ones. Uh, I think I had one more. Nope, maybe not. So this is where the mixing and matching came in. Because I will show you. I don't exactly remember what pattern she used. But, and I had pre-cut a whole bunch of these too. <laughs> so this is why now I have a whole bunch of things to put together. Because I have all these pieces cut. But, this is what she had done, though. That's not, that's not going to show you squat. Um, and you know what? If memory serves me, it was actually, I should have got pictures. I meant to get pictures, but we were chatting, and then there was, and then there were snacks, and, you know. Um, I actually think she put it on a smoky slaked card that I had cut for something else. But, yeah, so mixing and matching the colors. It's cool. The, the pebbled path and the boho blue go very nicely together. Alrighty. So, and I'm going to use some of those afterwards. So then you think, okay, well, so there's your, so, and, and in the world of crafting, you have like, you know, your simple stamping and then you get, you know, your casual, you build it up a little bit and then you get kind of avid. And then there's one that's artfully avid. I think it's called, um, I just call it, you know, you just keep adding stuff and, and, a lot of times, the more you add in that, the more sh bohemian and, and kind of vintage-y and rough it looks. I, I still think you can have clean and simple and just, just keep adding stuff. Because <laughs> I did. So, yes. So, now we've introduced colored cardstock on the bottom. Or, like, for the base. Um, I have a white layer. I have a layer of designer series paper. I have a die cut that I have then embossed. In this case, I did try to... I did die cut the... The same one as I used for the paper here, but it's stitched. And when I embossed it, I was hoping it would get rid of the stitching, but it didn't. So I, so at one angle you couldn't see it, and at another angle you could clear as day see all the stitching. And I wanted to hide the stitching, and I absolutely love this embossing folder. And I think the little hatches go with the little hatches. Uh, there's some extra cardstock stuck in here just to give. It doesn't go the whole way around. It just goes on both sides a little bit. Um, I've I've done a little mauve here. I've got a little shadow going behind the flower. I got the string wrapped around a little extra. And I've got some embellishments. So yes, this would be the, this would, for me, this would be the over the top card. And like I said, it's not super like um, vintage-y, frilly, whatever, anything. It, it, but it has, it has all the things on this card. So this was my progression <laughs> of making the cards. Um, and yeah, I like dimensionals. You can see I've got layers going. Um, but I think you should try this. I think start with something simple and then just keep stepping it up. Usually there's three steps. Um, I made five because I just kept thinking of different things and then I started making different colors. And because I prepped so much stuff for today, um, there will be more. And then I, I can also tell you that there will be a card because this is how much I prepped, um, that these pieces become part of, or maybe the strips or maybe the little teeth. I don't know, but there's no way I can not use all of this paper that I cut. So, yeah, watch for it. There'll be something coming. Okay, so now I have all these cards. I must do something with these cards. What must I do? Gift them. <laughs> That's what I must do. Um, so, I'm going to move these out of the way. So, I have five cards here. Um, I made it with four. Well, well, you know what? We're about to find out if it works for six. Um, and I don't actually have a complete one. I just have like the guts of one. So 
I can't even show you what we're making until it's done. But here we go. Everybody got your pens and papers ready? We're about to score things. Okay. We have a full sheet of Moody Moog. And I'm going to score it at one and three quarters. You can't see the whole scoring thing, but you can see some of it. That would be the cutting blade that I'm flicking to the other end because I do not want to cut anything. Okay. One and three quarters. That's on the short side. I guess I should have said that. So I'm just scoring one and three quarters on the short side. Then I'm going to turn it on the long side. I'm, I'm doing, I'm giving you this step by step so you can see just how easy this is and how cool this is and how, and how I don't even know where I saw it, quite honestly. Um, how genius it is. <laughs> it is not my genius, but it is genius nonetheless. Okay, so then... Oh, I did it wrong. I'm supposed to do this at five and a quarter. Oops. I did that at five. Okay, go to five and a quarter. Sorry if anybody else was scoring along with me. I didn't give you any heads up. Chances are you're not scoring along with me, but... Okay, five and a quarter. I barely did the other one. Let's hope for the best. Okay, now I've, now I've confused myself. Stand by one while I knock things on the floor. Yeah, I, I, sorry. I don't know why all of a sudden I thought, no, no, I did that wrong. But I did not do that wrong. I just, uh, I just confused myself for a minute. Some days, <laughs> numbers are just too much. Okay, so five and a quarter, because I wanted the half inch. That's what I was doing, five and five and a half. The whole thing screwed me up. Okay. Five and a quarter, and then five and three quarters. That's where I get my half inch. <laughs> That's what screwed me up. Um, and I'm just like, you don't have to go six times. I just sometimes just a habit do, but um, I wanna make sure I'm using the right lines because I'm gonna put this other little line on the back and hopefully nobody even notices. Okay. Um, I, I can't put it on the front because of the way I scored. So that's not gonna work. Okay, you'll see in a moment. So then, and, and I've, I've come to the conclusion, there is no good color paper to use online that will show you what you want to know. Nope, you can't see that. Okay, so I will fold and then I will cut because then you will be able to see what I'm doing. Okay, so then we're going to fold five and a quarter and five and three quarters. And we're going to burnish those. And then we're going to fold up this little one and three quarter flap at the bottom. Okay, so now we can see where we've got it. So you can see this little one. I think, because this is the inside, I think I could probably do this, and I could probably, because I only did it the one time, I could probably mostly erase my line, but I'm not even going to worry about it. It's on the back. Um, okay, so now that you can see what I've done there, now you can see the fold lines. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go way over about a quarter of an inch, and I'm going to angle towards this corner, and I'm going to go about a, well here I'm cutting part of it off on this one. I'm going to go a quarter inch over and I'm going to angle towards the corner. And then I'm going to go just above the score line because it gives a nicer finish. Sorry. <laughs> this is easier to do when you're not trying to stay in frame. I'm just going to flip it over here. I need to fold these out of my way. That's what I'm trying to do so I can get. And then I'm just going to cut this little flap off. And if you cut the score line off, like I said, you get a, a, a bit of smoother edge. There we go. Who saved scraps this small? Believe it or not, at a time I would have. But now, no, they just get in my way. Okay, so now we have this. Anybody know what we're making now? <laughs> okay, now we get Tracy's favorite thing ever. Tear and tape. And we are just going to put it along the edge of the straight edge. I'm going to burnish that down. And we're going to put it on the other side, just on the straight edge. So not the part we just cut. No, I, my camera is very low today. Um, I did actually get a new stand so I could put my camera stand farther back and extend the camera out so that I could make this work better. But the new thing just wants to drop the camera. So the camera is lower than normal now. <laughs> um, okay, so we got this on either side. And we are just going to, in true Tracy custom, take both pieces off before we need to. Now I'm just going to fold this up, and I'm just going to line it up like that. And then I'm going to give it, give it a good burnish so it stays. And then I'm going to do this one the same. And I'm just I'm lining up the outside edge. 
because um, that's what the part you'll see when it's closed. This part is angled. You won't even notice if it's crooked, but this part you will if it's hanging over. There we go. So that's what we made. Now let's see. Actually, you know what? If I put the three simple cards on one side <laughs> and the two thicker cards because they have everything on them on the other side, maybe this will work just how it's supposed to. Okay, so there's five cards. And look at how they look just lovely. Tuck into those little things. And then when you fold it, because we have that half inch that was giving me all the math grief, we've just made ourselves the loveliest little gift folder to give somebody five cards. I was going to say four, but it turns out you can fit five. <clears throat> if you made them all simple, you could probably put six or eight in here with envelopes. There's envelopes in there too. <clears throat> so is that not cool? And then... I didn't bring ribbon. You could make it so it ties shut. Um, <laughs> all right. So here's my <laughs> wee. Make a pick. This is all the current ribbon, not the current ribbon that Stampin' Up has. The current ribbon that Stampin' Up has that I have. <laughs> I don't own all of it. You know what? This new ribbon here <clears throat> is lovely. Lovely, lovely. Get the paper. I'm gonna decorate it with something. I just haven't decided what yet. This is also my new trick I've come up with. These are old clips that were in something of Stampin' Ups before. Um, and instead of chasing my ribbon, I now just clip to the edge of it. And I, have a, I have a variety of things. I use um, some of these little ones that were left over from a kit. Uh, and then I just clip whatever's left to the side. Um, I tried pins, I tried elastics, I tried all sorts of things. They all had something that, about them that annoyed me. And, um, but I'm finding this works because when I'm done, I just clip the end. I'll go get out my ribbon scissors. Um, I just clip the end and then it doesn't roll all over the place and unroll and annoy me. So that's all I do. That's for giving you tips as you go. I just take it like this and then these are the easiest ones. These ones work the best. I don't just don't have a ton of these ones. And then I just clip the ribbon to the inside of the piece of cardboard. You can't really see it there, but there. And then it doesn't roll all over there everywhere. Because I will tell you, the number of times I drop a roll ribbon on the floor swear and then go chase it down yeah okay so i'm going to decorate but i'm i'm decorating this full so i know how it folds and um because then it holds it up flatter for me too so i'm going to tie the bow on as well so i know what to decorate around this is our little secret for tying your bow so that the pretty sides in the front and then you futz and you futz and you a little bit of this, a little bit of that. There we go. I don't want to pull it too tight because it's going to be untied and tied many times. Um, I do need to trim, again, ribbon scissors nice and straight. Otherwise, you'll fray your ribbon and you'll trim, 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 and then it'll be like this long by the time you're done. So sharp scissors. And uh, we're just eyeballing right there. So there we go. Pretty bow. Uh, I love it when the bow works out first time. But... <laughs> Then the problem is, now you don't want to untie it, ever. Okay, so, I am going to untie it before I'm done, because uh, normally when I do something like this, I will put tear and tape across the back. Um, this one you could do it both, depending on your project. Sometimes you can tape both sides. Sometimes if you tape both sides, you can't actually open your project. But usually if you just tape one side, in this case, if I taped up to here and I taped the back, it would be fine. Um, so that when you open it, the ribbon's not falling on the floor or falling off or, you know, the, gives them the best shot. Now, when I was doing my trial and error, I cut this guy out. And I decided when I decided I was going to show you how to make this because I thought it was so cool. It, seriously, so simple, so cool. A sheet of paper, a couple folds, a little bit of trimming. Boom, here you go. Nice way to gift some cards. Um, but I thought, hey, can I decorate with this piece that I cut that I haven't used yet? This is the other way sometimes if you need to um, secure the ribbon but not glue the ribbon down or like tape the ribbon down, is you can put it behind something like this where this is secured because then it gives you a little pocket for the ribbon so the ribbon will instantly fall out but at the same time the ribbon will slide if it needs to. So there's that. I am going to... Stamp myself a flower. The flower is not in here. <laughs> I'm going to need that here in a minute too. 
Uh, what are we at for time? See, I wasted too much time fighting with technology. And I cannot remember what I actually started. I have a bunch of other stuff that I have to do tonight, though. So I'm thinking I gotta, I gotta do this while I'm doing it, cause I want to make sure it happens. Yep, we're going with this one. Okay, so I am using the Pretty Peacock. Uh, this is why I also have a ton of supplies on any given day. Is this paper is. Um, is actually one of the liners for the card, but I just grabbed it because it was close um, and it's too big for one So of course I'm gonna snap two <laughs> So now I'll have a spare one um, And in this case, I am not going to actually stamp a color in that other one I do like it just like seriously just on its own just the line drawing. I love it. I love it um, Okay, so then like I said, I wasn't planning on snapping, but here we are I'll tell you all the stuff I told you before um so the line drawing, photopolymer, I find most of the time it's fine. But as soon as you get any kind of solid image with photopolymer, piercing that. You definitely need some kind of foam underneath it to give it um, to give it the cushion that it that photopolymer doesn't have. So as you can tell, uh, waste not want not on the paper. So this is this is why, and I'll see if I can do it to get it to show on camera. Oh, I should have done it on the mat. Just a minute. I just said that, then I pushed it out of my way and didn't do it properly. Because that did not give me the, the full representation I was going for. So, this is still wet, so it's a much darker color. But you see the difference between, and I'm not sure why that one is doing that, um, between fully stamped and stamped off. It gets a lot darker, full strength. So <clears throat> that is why when I did them, Boho Blue is the only one that I left that way. Can't see where I'm going there. There we are. The, the stamps are not meant to be like full solid images. They're meant to be um, distinctive. Does this one say distinctive on it? No. They're meant to be um, shadows. Like so that so they're purposely like that, but sometimes getting a big gap like that is not the intended purpose. So I am lining up. Can you see where I'm doing this? I'm going to get my other hand out of the way. I'm lining up the bud with the bud. And then these three flowers, I'm just getting in the general vicinity. The bud is the smallest though. So I don't want to be like super away from that. And then I'm just going to twist it a little bit. There we go. And then down. And now they all got some color in varying amounts. <laughs> Right? Because it doesn't fully fill in anything. It pretty much fills in the butt, but it doesn't really fill in the other pieces. So there we go. Um, hmm, do I want to put this set? I, I seriously had no plan for this other than to show you the folder, but now I've decided I'm decorating. So here we go. Um, I'm trying to remember what I did with my little mini machine. I also found out today, you, well, I knew before, but I, as I was, I tried it a couple times and went, oh, stop doing that. Um, a card, like a card front, is still too wide for the mini. You cannot put it through. So you need to just do that. I feel like I'm going in slow motion right now. Like things are just not going as quick as they normally do. I have, I have been up for a long time doing a lot. <laughs> um, so I'm not sure how fully I will finish this, but I just want to give you an idea of throwing on a few decorations and, oh, wow, look at that, I'm off the screen, so that helps. This, uh, oh, there we go, the little mini machine, though, is handy dandy, and one of the handiest dandiest <laughs> parts about it is, uh, when you've only got a tiny little window of space on your desk, you can still die cut. Keep throwing all those things out to the side. And it just folds up and sits on the shelf behind you for the next time. <laughs> what else did I learn today? I learned that all my stuff is somewhere else. Well, there you go. Oh, nope, there we are. I was going to say, there you go. I cannot continue. I have no dimensionals. Um, and you know me. I need to have my dimensionals. So I found out when I was making these that if you cut a mini dimensional 
in half. Yes, they're already that tiny, but if you cut one in half, that little, what's that parallelogram? See that size? I think this way, but anyways, I think that's a parallel. I got the wrong finger, definitely doing that. <laughs> parallelogram, I think is the right name for that. Um, it fits right in the little nook here of where the where the stems join. So you can put one down on that skinny little stem because that fits right there. And then the other half, you have more than enough room, but the other half fits very nicely on this leaf. And then we'll throw a couple of... This is on the front, so don't cheap out with the dimensionals because you want it to be fairly solid. Otherwise, it will get repeatedly manhandled and... Uh, it won't hold up. I didn't actually push that dimensional down when I put it on. And I'll just peel some backs off. I have very short nails, so there's a challenge for me. Yeah, see, I do this all the time. So this will sit on my desk like this till I finish. Um, that is like way too big. Uh, or sorry, this is way too big for this. I need something else in between. Let's see, can I put another... <laughs> How much can we do? How many patterns could we put? <laughs> probably, this is probably not going to work. I can't find the one I want. There we go. That was what I was looking for. I was trying to get the lesser of the patterns. Can I put two patterns? This, this is this is uh, this is how I craft. Let's see, what else can I do? Can I put two patterns with a layer of white in between? Oh, that I could do. But, I've got frilly and i got frilly. I need more frilly. Uh, frilly is not the word, but I am blanking on the word I want right now. Scalloped. The word is scalloped. <laughs> So this is, because they have, they all have this, these dies are cool. So this one makes like a eyelet scallop. This one is uh, not quite stitched because it's little dots instead of stitches. This one is the stitched. This one, um, actually these lines cut out. And then this one makes very lacy looking little. That makes these ones with very distinctive holes in them. Uh, so yeah, they, they all make a different something to them. Um, this will also give me, oh, and it just fits, look at that. Um, it'll also give me a bit more stability in the front of my holder. And yep, I am aware of the <laughs> the unmasked, the unmasked dimensionals. Okay, this is just a bit too much in one spot right now. Um, <clears throat> it'll give me a bit of stability on the, on the folder too. Um, I have made projects in the past where I have actually put a layer on the back as well just to make it a little more solid so once we make the front solid if it turns out that the back needs a little help um you can always just put on like a solid color layer you can put on a second layer of the same color so that it's not super obvious that it's there but it just gives it stability um so it doesn't bend too much these aren't things you're mailing so well generally they wouldn't be something you were mailing so you don't have to worry about getting them to fit through the slot or anything so make it a little thicker so it stays together and then um, it will generally um, be reusable too, right? So if you use the first five cards, oops, sorry, that's very loud, just snapping that stuff. Uh, once you use the first five cards, you might just um, put five different cards in it or put notes in it, or maybe you save the card somebody gives you in it. That could be, it could go all sorts of different ways. Okay, so I obviously got this one a little too close to the edge. Because I missed one tiny little bit right into my um, the die pad lined up. Because I missed one tiny little bit of that corner. So here's what <laughs> here's Tracy's method of repairing. So there's a little bit of a gouge in there, um, and it didn't cut as cleanly as the other ones. So you know how you fix that? You make sure that you put it where the bow is in front of it. <laughs> Yep, that's how you do it. Look at that. Oh, I like that. It's busy, but it it's not... I don't know, I like it. <laughs> um, what's the pattern on the other side of this? Oh, 
Ooh. Oh, I like that one even better. Nope, nope, I like the other one better. <laughs> okay, we're going back to the original. I like it. Okay, so this is this is the mauve one, but do you remember when I showed you the copper one? What is that? It, seriously, it doesn't matter what color it is, the pattern still reminds me of the same movie. But definitely the copper clay one. Okay. So yeah. I'm going to put it like that. Then I'm going to put this flower on here. Um, I'm going to bling it up a little bit. See, I want to put a little, I still want to put my little, my little bow here, but I don't think that's a good idea given that I got a big bow here. So I'm not going to do that. <laughs> but the stem just, the stem just needs something. So here's my other thing that I ended up with by the time I was done, because there was, a, there was a fair bit of trial and error and whichever card it was that I made said happy birthday on it. I think these all say happy birthday on it. They're just in 10 different colors. Um... Okay, here's here's um, here's my last little plug tip, whatever, and then I'm just gonna pick a sentiment and, and move on. Um, this is one of those stamp sets that you have to own. <laughs> Tracy said you have to own this. Um, this stamp set comes in so handy for so many things. Sorry, I wasn't purposely hiding it. I was just holding it up like that. Um, so lots of times I get asked, hey, you know, do you, like you want to write happy birthday grandma, happy birthday grandpa, happy birthday niece, nephew, whatever. Um, I do like, there's the in-laws here. So son-in-law, daughter-in-law, if you want to. Um, I make up my own thing, so I actually have like a nephew-in-law. <laughs> actually, he's a step-nephew-in-law, to be technical. but um, And he's a lovely man. They both are. I have two of them, actually. Um, so yeah, you can make up your own combinations here, which is what I love. Um, there's down here somewhere. I just can't find it right now. Oh, here we go. Bonus. So some people have bonus sons or daughters or bonus moms and dads and things. So you get that. But there's also, if you look at these like little dudes at the bottom, you're in my thoughts. Happy birthday. Thanks. Congratulations. Best ever. Um, from your to my love and wonderful. So there's like, there's all these different combinations you can make out of it, but even just these little, um, little extra words and stuff on the bottom are just awesome so I am going to pick the wrong size nope that is the right size so I'm going to show you something else that I helped my lovely sister-in-law to today and I'm just going to copy her idea as soon as I find it so when you do this with the stamp set <laughs> sometimes they don't make any sense friend there we go okay so my problem now is that I have 70 things on the go and all of my all of my blocks are somewhere else. I actually have a single time slot. Oh, there we go. I'm gonna, I was putting these off to the side, but who am I kidding? Let's bring those back out because, you know, we got to bling it up a little bit. Okay. I, though, instead of doing this in move again, I'm going to go with my Next favorite. Um, I don't. I don't actually stamp a ton of things in black generally because just the way our black stamp pad is. <laughs> I prefer other ones. But this pebbled path. Seriously, loving this pebbled path. And uh, let's see. Something to stamp on here just a sec. And um, that's just in case I go off. Um, I use it a lot for all sorts of things. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stamp this word friend right there in the middle. And then I'm going to take this and it's so much easier with a photopolymer than it is with a uh, one of the rubber stamps, but I do it with rubber stamps all the time too. You've seen me do it before. And I'm going to, this says best ever. So I'm going to go, try to get this right angle here. This is never going to work if I try to do it on camera because I kind of screw something up, but I just go like this because I can see where the word best ends and I'm going up against the edge of the stamp. Now sometimes it's a bit of trial and error but in the case of photopolymer it's usually easier. Here's the thing to watch for though. You're doing it at a weird angle because you're trying to get just part of it. So guaranteed every time I think I get stuff on the block. So you want to take that off. 
so that you don't get it everywhere. Here's the other way you could do it if it works. And it depends how close the letters are, but if you, if it's if they're far enough apart, you can try doing it that way as well. And then I'm going to put this best in front. So it's not the end of the world. It's just a tiny little thing. But apparently I got a little bit just on the E. Then here's the thing. You must do it very well. You must clean your stamp. So I clean my stamp. I dry it off a little bit on my arm. <laughs> or on the cardboard. And then I'm going to do the opposite of what I just did. And I'm just going to ink up ever. And because I just washed it, and because it still might be a little wet, I'm going to stamp the ever. I'm going to drop it, but that's okay. So yes, it is the only, I'm not getting any overlay. So I'm going to go back and stamp ever now, because I know it's going to work. And then I'm going to go like this. And I'm going to do my best to get them even on either side. Which, it's just a crapshoot at this point, but... Get off the extra ink before I set it off on the side of my desk. And now, I have a label that says best friend ever <laughs> that I can put here because something needs to go on that step. Okay, I said I was done with the tips. I'm not done with the tips. I'm on a roll tonight. <laughs> Here's the other thing I do. I, for whatever reason, quite like this little jaunty angle instead of a straight on my thing. Right? Now, <laughs> we do have dies to do this and, and such, but I, you know what the heck? I like scissors. Now, the number of times I have done this and then cut the other one to match and then had to cut it again because they didn't match them back. And pretty soon you're like halfway through the word. So here's what I found. This is the piece I just cut off. So I'm going to drop it on the ground. I'm going to flip it over. Same piece. <laughs> I'm going to flip it over. Right. See, there's my piece. And I'm going to line it up because now I can see my spacing too. I'm going to line it up like this. And I'm going to use that as my template. And I'm going to cut, and I now have the same angle because I use the angle that I cut as my tip plate. Ta-da! <laughs> Sorry. The first time I figured that out and it saved me all the grief of constantly cutting over and over and over again. And like I said, short, 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 stamp it again. Short, short, short. Yeah. All right, people. What did I do with my dimensionals? There they are. Sorry. My desk is, the space is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to put extra because, it's again, it's on the front. We don't want to cheap out um, and have it get all mangled. But I don't want to put one dead in the center because that's where the stem's going to go. And uh, I don't want to squish the stem down. So take those off. And then when I go, I'll just move this little guy out of the way. I, I realize now as I'm doing this, I probably should have just done this in the pretty peacock because I just realized I just got a third color going, but it's a neutral, so it'll be fine. I also just realized I actually never taped any of those down. I just set them there. Okay. So it takes a while for the video to upload, so I'm going to like stop and upload the video. And then I'm going to tape all those layers together, and I'm going to put on some embellishments once I tape those down. And um, I'm going to take a picture of it. So that you can have something to go with. And I will write those measurements down in the post so that you can see them. But, again, go play. It is the most fun to do. And, like I said, you don't even have to make full cards if you don't want to. I had pre-cut a bunch of these. Um, when I start prepping for something, I mean, I prep for something. This is prepped. <laughs> right? To make just that card. I have just as many of all for the, all the other cards. So I always have a ton of these layers. So I just started stamping. Try different colors. See what you get. Um, mount them. Don't mount them. Try with different embellishments. Try a little bit of different colors and things. It is lots of fun to play. So. Many, many cards. Many, many levels. In colors. Awesome. A few tips along the way. That's what's up Wednesday. <laughs> been a long day peeps can you tell thank you everybody thank you for your patience i hope this video does not take too too long but i i swear to god i am hanging up i'm not even going to make the tea that i desperately want right now i am uploading the video before i go make myself tea have a lovely wednesday i will be back in some form 
shortly after noon on Friday. Have a good week. See you then.